Okay, <clears throat> in this video I'm going to be reviewing World's Finest Issue 167. And before I start the review, I'm just going... I, well, I have to explain that this is an imaginary story. And for those who never read the graphic, either one of the graphic novels, an imaginary story was essentially almost a prototype for the Elseworld stories that we would start getting in the mid to late 1980s. The imaginary stories of the mid to late 60s usually centered on possible futures or a character being killed off or one hero's secret identity being revealed. This story is called the new Superman and Batman team. The story starts years ago as Jor-El and Laura are essentially sending off their son Kal-El right as Krypton is falling apart. While through space Right as Kal-El's ship is coming to Earth, a chunk of gold kryptonite flies past Kal-El's ship. But since he was exposed to our yellow sun, he was able to reach out and he was exposed to it. So when he uh, when he lands in Smallville, Kansas, baby Kal-El had been completely and permanently stripped of his powers. And like in, in continuity, he's found by Jonathan and Martha Kent. Then we cut to at least ten years later, where we, at Smallville Elementary, where we see Lex Luthor, who is essentially a child genius. As for Clark Kent, he's proven himself to be an outstanding athlete, even if he lost his powers to gold kryptonite. And one of Lex Luthor's inventions is a literal pair of x-ray glasses. He also built a larger machine that could control the weather. Yeah, so Lex Luthor is not evil in this universe. As Clark asks him what's in this box, and Lex just just writes it off as bits of radioactive waste that he needs to get rid of. As when he's alone with it, he opens it up to reveal an experimental serum that he made using his blood that could give him superpowers. Later that day, a, pl a plane comes crashing out of the air and is aimed at small well it's about to accidentally crash into smallville high when suddenly superman who is lex luthor in this imaginary story 
flies in and catches the plane. Lana Lang and Clark Kent talk about this mysterious Superboy. And then Clark talks about him to Lex Luthor, not even knowing that he him, he's talking to Superboy himself. And then we essentially get a montage of Superboy essentially fighting crime. And then we get our take on the Batman origin story for this comic book. As Clark Kent is walking home with Lana Lang, Kent's general store is being robbed. So anyways, John and Martha mouth off to the robber, and he shoots them. Clark and Lex hear the gunshots and quickly run in to see that Jonathan and Martha had been shot. Lex quickly changes into Superboy and flies off with John Kent. And although Superboy was able to get Pa Kent to a hospital, he still ends up dying and almost spilled the beans about Clark being an alien. So then, that's where Clark decides to devote his life to fighting crime. And when looking out the window, he sees a bat, which is essentially the inspiration for him to become this story's Batman. So then, after the funeral, Clark Kent is taken in by his rich uncle Kendall, in, who lives in Gotham City. The story then essentially skips forward another decade where Lex is essentially doing... He's basically where Clark Kent would be in normal continuity. And over in Gotham City... Clark's Uncle Kendall has passed and left him everything, including what was underneath his estate, which in a couple of weeks, Clark and Alfred have already set up the Batcave in. Then we essentially get what is Clark's first night on the job is Batman, as we see him fight crime. The police arrive, and the Dark Knight essentially introduces himself to the authorities, and within weeks, Batman has become a sensation within Gotham City. Until eventually, at the Daily Planet, Perry White tells Lex Luthor and Lois Lane to interview a mil the millionaire Clark Kent who lives in Gotham City. When the two friends are able to catch up, Clark is surprised that Lex is a newspaper reporter as opposed to being a scientist or something along that line. And Clark shows Lex essentially a model for a children's hospital that he's going to build. 
So anyways, Lex and Lois are on their way back to Metropolis. When suddenly, out of nowhere, Brainiac's ship flies over them, and Brainiac abducts Lois. Moments later, Superman flies up to Lois' rescue, but gets repelled off it. Later, on land, Superman and Batman meet for the first time and team up to bring down Brainiac. Which they do quite easily. Well, Batman g gives Lois Lane an interview, Su and Superman takes Brainiac is about to take Brainiac to space prison. He notices that Batman is disguising his voice, obviously, and uses his X-ray vision to peek under beneath underneath Batman's mask, and finds out that Batman is his old friend Clark Kent. As the months pass, Clark goes to Metropolis more and more to see Lois. They date, become an actual couple, and eventually get married. On their honeymoon, Clark Kent brings up Batman and reveals to her that he's Batman. And just then, Lex Luthor shows up and reveals that he's Superman. And Lois is very happy, knowing that her husband and her best friend are the world's greatest superheroes. So then, <clears throat> later, Supergirl's rocket crash lands on Earth and Superman finds it. She tells the Man of Steel that, she wa that she's from Argo City, a long-lost fragment of Krypton, and her father sent her to Earth because their city was doomed of kryptonite poisoning. She asks if he is also a Kryptonian, but Superman tells her that he's not, and he created a serum that gave him his powers, but then tells her that he does know a couple who'd be willing to take her in as they fly to Wayne Manor. Clark essentially introduces Supergirl to Lois as his cousin, Linda Kent, without actually being aware that she really is his cousin. So anyways, a few weeks later, a truck is being robbed by a vehicle with a massive jackknife coming out of it. Batman, Superman, and Supergirl show up to stop the robbery, being committed by the Toy Man, who then tries to bring down Batman with a toy molecular dissolver ray gun. And as Superman takes Toy Man into custody, Batman begins to glow, and Supergirl essentially realizes she has to stay away from Batman recognizing the glow as kryptonite poisoning. So anyways, Superman and Supergirl fly back to the
the Batcave with Batman, where Superman puts two and two together, deducing that Clark Kent is a Kryptonian who lost his powers long ago after being uh, exposed to gold kryptonite and somehow whatever Toy Man blasted him with is now killing him with what Superman dubs gold kryptonite fever so using his super speed Superman builds a device meant to transfer his powers into Clark Kent and the reason he changed out of the bat suit and into um, his civilian clothes is because if this works, he'll be wearing Superman's outfit, which would be symbolic of him essentially reclaiming his heritage and becoming the new Superman. Alfred flips the switch and Clark Kent regains his power and the gold kryptonite fever was transferred to Lex Luthor that can't hurt him because he's human and essentially the comic ends with Lex Luthor going into space in a rocket ship he invented and Clark Kent embracing his destiny as Superman on Earth. So anyways, that was World's Finest 167. It was good. I definitely enjoyed it. It was unique seeing what would happen if Clark Kent became Batman. You're not going to be able to find this one on the internet or in comic book stores as something from the Bronze Age printed in the late 1960s. It is not something you're going to find, well, maybe you could find it at a convention if you are really, really lucky. But if, uh, if you find it somehow, or if DC were to ever reprint this, or print it in a third volume of their imaginary stories, I would suggest that you give it a read.